Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are continuing with the series Vector Algebra and today's topic of discussion is Divergence. This video will make a clear concept of divergence and you will understand divergence from its physical significance perspective. Before we move on to the main topic, here is something about myself and I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates on engineering mathematics, ComSol multiphysics and other engineering and research related topics. So, we try to understand divergence in a stepwise manner and the first step of understanding any physical phenomena should be the mathematical form. So, here I have written the mathematical form. So, divergence of a vector say a vector where a vector is given by this ax i cap plus ay j cap plus ak k cap where ax, ay and ak are the components or scalar components of the vector in x, y and z Cartesian coordinate axis. So you have to mind it that this is in a Cartesian frame. I am showing you in a Cartesian frame that could be in another uh, reference frame as well. And uh, herein the operator is i dodo x plus j dodo y plus k dodo z. So this is the this is the operator and we have a dot product between these two which gives you this form dodo x of ax plus dodo y of ay plus dodo z of az. So from very fundamental mathematical point of view we know this is the expression for a divergence of a vector. Now let us try to understand it geometrically. So if you focus on figure a here is the figure. You can see that all the arrows are pointing outwards. So this is a special type of situation where there is a point, say this particular point, and you have few vectors which are pointing outwards. Now, if you look at the other figure, figure B, the case is exactly opposite. What is happening here? You have multiple vectors which are pointing inwards and trying to meet at a particular point, say this particular point. So, you have to understand here all the arrows are signifying vectors. By now, you already know uh, geometrically we represent vector by an arrow line where the direction is signified by the direction of the arrow and magnitude by the length or the dimension of the arrow. So all those things are very trivial, I am not going into details, but two things I have noticed, I have taken here. One is you have a point of source and this is a point of sink. So this is the fundamental concept where the, where the concept of divergence originates. So you should have a point of source or a point of sink. If you have a point of source, we call it a positive divergence. If you have a point of sink, we call it a negative divergence. But the situations are not, I mean, like this ideal. Ideal means like in figure A, you see all the vectors are pointing outwards and in figure B, all the vectors are pointing inwards. The situation could, could be a kind of mixed situation like uh, in C and D. So here you can see uh, in figure C, you have more vectors pointing inwards and two vectors pointing outwards. So here the number of inward vectors outnumbered the number of outward vectors. So as a resultant, you have more vectors which are pointing inwards. So we can, uh, we can think this as a sink. So you can resemble this particular figure with this, but as a resultant, so this has a neg negative divergence and if you look at the other figure, that is the figure D, uh, here you can see you have more vectors which are pointing outwards, those red lines and you have two vectors which are pointing inwards. So as a whole, you have more vectors pointing outwards. So it's a positive divergence situation. Now you look at the figure E and try to think this is a spatial figure where you have number of vectors pointing outwards is equal to the number of vectors pointing inward. So in this case, 
the positive divergence and negative divergence nullify each other and as a whole you can say it has a zero divergence so moving forward so i have already introduced you to the concept of source and sync if you look at wikipedia wikipedia also tells this concept so divergence means in a vector space either you have a source or you have a sink so you have to look for this source and sink in a vector space but we have to we have to think from the physical perspective so geometrically we have understood a uh, divergence uh, in a good manner i think after you uh, you listen to this lecture you know what is the geometric significance of divergence but try to think whether this kind of source and sinks are actually available in real uh, vector field or not so for you i have taken one example this is an example of an electric dipole where you have a positive charge and a negative charge and we all know that there is something called electric force of lines and those force of lines always originate from the positive charge and it goes to the negative charge so the force of line is directed from plus q to minus q now you have multiple force of lines all are sourcing out from the positive q and it is getting it is getting getting i can say consumed in this negative q so you can relate this figure with a source if you just try to relate here you see all the vectors are pointing outward from this plus q so this is a kind of source and we can tell this is a positive divergence and if you look at this minus q carefully you can see that this resembles like the sink you have multiple vectors which are pointing inwards it's like meeting at a particular point this is a kind of sink and that's why it has a negative divergence so minus q has a negative divergence around it now in physical vector space you may have multiple sources you may have multiple sinks or you can have random combinations of sources and sinks like uh, here i have taken an example where you you can get two sources together in a same vector space like you have two positive uh, charges lying down on a physical space so you will have this uh, force of lines all are pointing outwards from both this positive charges so those are like you have two sources and you have two positive divergent sources now we we introduce you with more real life examples so that your concept of divergence become more clear so the first example is an example of a wind blow uh, try to visualize the situation the wind is blowing and in in uh, in a space that would be a three dimensional space where the air is flowing or wind is blowing you can say so the vector field means in a physical space at every point the vectors are different vectors are different means its magnitude and their directions can be different so in the first figure vector field mean the uh, velocity vectors so at every point just try to visualize it at every point you will have a air air molecule which has a different speed or different i can well, it should not be speed it should it should be velocity it has different velocities but you will never get a point from which all the fluid molecules are coming out or you will never get to a point where all the fluid molecules are meeting and never coming out from the point so this is a kind of unphysical situation in real life you will never have few molecules meeting at a point and getting vanished or you will never have a an arbitrary point from where all the fluid molecules are coming out because velocity is nothing but movement of the fluid molecules so in this cases you never have a positive divergence always everywhere the divergence is zero similarly 
if you look at the river flow or any other liquid flow stream similar concept applies you never have a, um, a hypothetical source or a sink so you never have a divergence or a positive or negative divergence in those flow fields i have already talked about this electrical dipole concept but let me introduce you with the gauss's law because uh, it is quite related with the divergence so we have already uh, read it that divergence of electric field is equated with the charge or the char charge density multiplied by some constant where which is epsilon zero i'm not coming about this i'm not talking about the constant here but i'm just trying to tell you about that the divergence of electric field is related with the charge which is inside now you try to visualize a circle around this positive charge now this circle inside this circle you have a positive charge and which has a charge density so this law is telling if you take a, a closed loop and if you have a charge inside then there will be obviously magnetic force sorry not magnetic electric electric force of lines either coming out or going in because yeah obvious if you have a positive charge then yeah, the uh, vectors will be going out if you have a negative charge the vectors will be coming in like what is happening here so whenever you enclose any charge you will have such vectors either coming out or going in so you have a divergence and the divergence will be proportional to the charge if you have multiple charges if you have more charge there will be more force of lines coming out so the magnitude of divergence will be proportional to the amount of charge and that is what physically says this gauss's law we'll talk more about this gauss's law now i come to certain points where there are some controversies where we need more explanation like divergence of magnetic field is always zero here you see like electric force of lines you have magnetic force of lines and uh, we have read it a quite lot in our class 2 or college level but uh, the divergence of magnetic field is always zero if you uh, uh, surf on internet you will find like uh, there is no monopole monopole of magnet existing in the nature and that is why the divergence of magnetic field is zero but that needs more elaborate explanation why the divergence is zero uh, because it is contradictory yeah. from uh, from my explanation i what i have told like if you have like like a point where vectors are pointing outwards then you have a positive divergence so here you see here also it is pointing outwards but it has a zero divergence so either this figure is wrong or there is some issue so i'll talk about this issue in uh, in an upcoming video just follow me for this uh, video and another situation that is for compressible fluid flow so what i told is for incompressible flows you never have a hypothetical point where the molecules are getting consumed or being sourced out but in a compressible flow there might be situations where you have uh, either a positive or negative divergence and uh, again i'll talk more about compressible flow why the divergence is not zero in case of a compressible flow so you just just follow for um, um, our upcoming videos for that now once you finish my uh, video then you may consult internet or a few books and you find those pictures when they explain divergences which i have not discussed in my previous slide so i thought of uh, telling you about those pictures also because these pictures may make you confuse a bit so in all the figures which i have taken the divergence is zero let me tell you why the divergence is zero because you see uh, it is like uh, uh, the amount of vectors moving in is equal to moving out but there are two situations where you can see few vectors are pointing downwards and the few vectors are pointing upwards the question is whether this should have a zero divergence or it should have some divergence the answer is the divergence is zero everywhere despite few being i mean and going in the opposite direction because whenever you are thinking about divergence you should not 
focus on a region you should always focus on a particular point so if you focus on a particular point say i am focusing on this particular point you see one vector is coming in and another vector is coming out that means it is nullifying each other so it's a zero divergence so any point in this space you take suppose this point again one in one out so at this point there is no source or no thing anywhere you just hover through there will be no points where the vectors are pointing uh, outward like a source or thing so you hover through any point there is no such point so in all the cases the divergence is zero now let us look at another physical scenario this is a kind of fountain which is flowing like you have a source of water here and the water is getting lifted and then it is falling down so this is a beautiful picture so if you look at this particular zone so what do you see the water molecules are pointing outwards it's a kind of the first picture which i have shown to you like uh, from somewhere the uh, the vectors are pointing outwards so is it a kind of source yeah obviously it's a volumetric source but it's never a point source so mind it if you have a vectors those which are pointing outwards that does not necessarily mean that you have a divergence whenever you are talking about divergence you should not look at a zone you should look at a point so if you look at a zone obviously there are vectors pointing outwards from this zone but now let us look at a particular point suppose here see one fluid molecule if comes one fluid molecule has to go because there is no accumulation so every point the divergence is zero look at this point molecules are coming and going so every point like here water is falling down so water molecule is coming here so at any particular point there is no source or no thing so the divergence is zero everywhere uh, so i feel uh, from this video you understood what a divergence is and uh, it has actually improved your concept of divergence i will also put some videos in the description box there are beautiful videos on the internet so i will also uh, give the links of those videos in the description box so that you can have further look you can you can look at the videos how other people are explaining to you about the divergence so once you go through all this so your concept of divergence will be clear so in our next video series we will be talking about curl so in the very next series we will be talking about curl like the way we discussed about divergence and also the three important theorems we'll talk about one is stokes theorem divergence theorem gauss divergence theorem and green's theorem so uh, those videos are uh, will also be enjoying to you so i request you to follow us and subscribe to our channel so we get motivated and make more videos so for the time being i thank you and let's meet you in the next video